Hey yo, what's good everyone? Welcome to my channel, Strasvice, Vinyasa Put Mauro, and today we're gonna react to the last part of the history of Russia, part five. So don't worry if you haven't watched all the episodes, you know, I'm gonna leave the playlist right here if you missed any episode. Probably in the future I'm gonna be uploading also the full the full reactions, you know, it's gonna be like a 50 to one hour, you know, with my commentary and everything. It's gonna be fun, you know, if you don't wanna stay there and search for every video, I'm gonna upload the full video. So yeah, guys, I will stop talking right now. Let's check out the last part of the history of Russia. And if you have any more recommendations, type them in the comment section. In 1881, Russian Emperor Al Okay, 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 wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna be putting the Russian subtitles. Okay. Alexander II was assassinated by left wing terrorists in St. Petersburg. Today, the place where he was fatally wounded is marked by the magnificent Church of the Saviour on spilled blood. Alexander II had been a reformer, hailed as the liberator for freeing Russia's serfs. But his son and successor Alexander III believed his father's reforms had unleashed dangerous forces within Russia that ultimately led to his death. As emperor, he publicly vowed to reassert autocratic rule declaring that, in the midst of our great grief, the voice of God orders us to undertake courageously the task of ruling, with faith in the strength and rightness of autocratic power. The Tsar's secret police, the so-called Okranka, was ordered to infiltrate Russia's many revolutionary groups. Those found guilty of plotting against the government were hanged or sent into internal exile in Siberia. Alexander III was a pious man who supported the Orthodox Church and the assertion of a strong Russian national identity. Russia's Jews became victims of this policy. They'd already been targeted in murderous race riots known as pogroms after false rumours were spread that they were responsible for the assassination of the Emperor. Now, the government expelled 20,000 Jews from Moscow, and many who could began to leave the country. Over the next 40 years, around 2 million Jews would leave Russia, most bound for the USA. Wow, yeah, no Concerned that. by the growing power of Germany, Russia signed an alliance with France both sides promising military aid if the other was attacked. Mm. Sergei Vita was appointed Russia's new Minister of Finance. His reforms helped to modernize the Russian economy and encourage foreign investment, particularly from its new ally, France. French loans helped Russia to develop its industry and infrastructure. Work began on the Trans-Siberian Railway, Completed in 1916, it remains the world's longest railway line, running 5,772 miles from That's Moscow insane. to... How long would you take it? How long would it take you to go from Moscow to Siberia? Oh my God, 10,000 kilometers. That's insane. You're arriving right to North Korea, to the border of North Korea. That's crazy. Oh my god, I think it would take you, wait, let me think, it's gonna go like, uh, if it goes like uh, 100 miles per hour, I don't think it's gonna go 100 miles per hour, but yeah, it's gonna be like, uh, in a day you do 24, four days, oh my god, four days and a half it would take you, that's insane. I mean, I thought more, but yeah, still insane. Vladivostok. 
Alexander III was succeeded by his son, Nicholas II. His coronation was marred by tragedy, when 1,400 people were crushed to death at an open-air celebration in Moscow. Wow. That's crazy. China granted Russia the right to build a naval base at Port Arthur. When China faced a major revolt, known as the Boxer Rebellion, Russia moved troops into Manchuria, under the pretext of defending Port Arthur from the rebels. This brought Russia into conflict with Japan, who also had designs over Manchuria and Korea. The Japanese made a surprise attack on Port Arthur, then defeated the Russian army at the giant Battle of Mukden. Russia's Baltic fleet, meanwhile, had sailed halfway around the world to reach the Pacific, where it was immediately annihilated at the Battle of Tsushima. Russia was left with no option but to sign a humiliating peace, brokered by US President Theodore Roosevelt. Meanwhile, the Tsar faced another crisis, much closer to home. In St. Petersburg, a strike by steel workers had escalated, and plans were made for a mass demonstration. Tens of thousands of protesters marched to the Winter Palace to present a petition to the Tsar, asking for better workers' rights and more political freedom. But instead, troops opened fire on the crowds, killing more than 100. Bloody Sunday, as it became known, led to more strikes and unrest across the country. The crew of the battleship Potemkin mutinied, killing their officers and taking control. That's very famous, that's very famous, uh, the Potemkin, because I remember there was a famous, very famous movie they would la they last like five or six hours. It was insane. But I've watched it all. It's really beautiful. You should watch it, guys, if you haven't. All of the ship. To defuse the, the crisis, name, Nicholas II okay. reluctantly issued the October Manifesto, drafted under the supervision of Sergei Vita. It promised an elected assembly and new political rights, including freedom of speech, and was welcomed by most moderates. Russia's first constitution was drafted the next year. For the first time, the Tsar would share power with an elected assembly, the State Duma, though the Tsar had the right to veto its legislation and dissolve it at any time. Sergei Vita finally lost the Tsar's confidence and was dismissed. The Tsar's new prime minister, Stolypin, introduced land reforms to help the peasants while dealing severely with Russia's would-be revolutionaries, so much so that the hangman's noose got a new nickname, Stolypin's Necktie. But having survived several attempts on his life, Stolypin was shot and killed by an assassin at the Kiev Opera House. Wow. Meanwhile, Grigory Rasputin, a Siberian faith healer, do like to kill presidents and monarchs at uh, the opera house, don't they? Hitler had joined the imperial family's inner circle, thanks to his unique ability to ease the suffering of the Tsar's haemophiliac son, Alexei. Despite sporadic acts of terrorism, Russia now had the fastest growing economy in Europe. Agricultural and industrial output were on the rise. Most ordinary Russians remained loyal to the Tsar and his family. Russia's future seemed bright. In 1914, in Sarajevo, a Slav nationalist assassinated Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Yeah, we all know that. So we, we should make, a, I did make a reaction uh, 
on the World War I by oversimplified uh, about one year ago, but we should make more. I think we should make more reactions to that. And then we, we're going to react to other stuff as well. I'm reacting also to the Napoleonic Wars. So guys, if you have any good videos about World War I, please type them in the comment section. I'm going to do it very soon. Denant, heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, sparking a European crisis. When Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia, Emperor Nicholas ordered the Russian army to mobilize, to show his support for a fellow Slav nation. Austria-Hungary's ally, Germany, saw Russian mobilization as a threat and declared war. Europe's network of alliances came into effect, and soon all the major powers were marching to war. Uh, it didn't really happen that easily, you know. Nobody wanted that war, but <laughs> yeah, of course, he's gonna have to, you know, synthesize very much, you know. You can't just say that and say everything in 12 minutes, but yeah. <laughs> didn't, nobody really wanted that war, but it happened. It had to happen, unfortunately. World War I had begun. Russia experienced a wave of patriotic fervor. The capital, St. Petersburg, was even renamed Petrograd to sound less German. Wow, An early that. Russian advance into East Prussia ended with heavy defeats at Tannenberg and the Masurian Lakes. There was greater success against Austria-Hungary, but that too came at a high price. Russian losses forced the army to make a general retreat in 1915. In 1916, Russia's Brusilov offensive against Austro-Hungarian forces was one of the most successful Allied attacks of the war. But losses were so heavy that the Russian army was unable to launch any more major operations. In Petrograd, Rasputin whose alleged influence over the Tsar's family was despised by certain Russian aristocrats, was murdered, possibly with the help of British agents. We need to react to the Russian Revolution The war as well. put intolerable strains on Russia. At the front, losses were enormous, while in the cities, economic mismanagement led to rising prices and food shortages. In Petrograd, the workers' frustration led to strikes and demonstrations. Troops ordered to disperse the crowds refused and joined the protesters instead. The government had lost control of the capital. On board the imperial train at Puskov, Senior politicians and generals told the Emperor he must abdicate, or Russia would descend into anarchy and lose the war. Nicholas accepted their advice and renounced the throne in favour of his brother, Grand Duke Michael, who effectively declined the offer. Four hundred years of Romanov rule were at an end. Russia was now a republic. A provisional government took power, but could not halt Russia's slide into economic and military chaos. Workers, soldiers and peasants elected their own councils, known as Soviets. The Petrograd Soviet was so powerful, it was effectively a rival government, especially as discontent with the provisional government continued to grow. The Bolsheviks, under Vladimir Lenin, attracted growing support. With their radical proposals for an immediate end to the war, the redistribution of land, and transfer of power to the Soviets. In October, they launched a coup, masterminded by Leon Trotsky. Bolshevik Red Guards stormed the Winter Palace, where the provisional government met, and arrested its members. Lenin and the Bolsheviks were now in charge. Russia had been thrown upon a bold and dangerous course. Under a Marxist-inspired revolutionary party, it would now seek to create the world's first communist state. Wow. 
but first it would have to survive the chaos and slaughter of one of history's bloodiest civil wars. Thank you. That was really amazing. That was truly amazing. I really enjoyed reacting to all these videos. I'm also reacting to the Napoleonic Wars that's still from the same channel. So it's really beautiful. So guys, this is it. We will see later. Let me know down in the comments if you want me to do like a mashup of all the reactions to this one so you can see they all together, all the five parts. And also, if you have any more videos to check out about the Russian Revolution, the Russian Civil War, the um, whatever, anything about Russia, you know, the Soviet Union. We still haven't done any reaction to, to the Soviet Union, how it came to be. So it will be very much interesting. So yeah, guys, any recommendations will be very much appreciated. So hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time. That's Daniel.